Sunday, 18th of May of 2021. Warm welcome to all of our friends, fans, community members, participants and viewers on various platforms worldwide. Thank you for joining us and thank you for supporting the channel and all I do here with my community every single day on Twitch. Today is Sunday and generally on Sunday we reflect on all that's been happening during the last week and also what is ahead. A very, very rainy, drizzly, wet Sunday yet again here in London suburbs. Honestly, last few days have been very wet and after having a spell of very cold weather at night in particular, minus degrees uh, temperatures, we've gone up the ladder with the temperatures so we are really warm and very very wet and that is really quite unpleasant. I was returning back from my dinner last night and I think the night before and indeed it was raining quite a bit but I have to say this morning has been particularly wet, perhaps a bit more than any other in the last few days. and. Uh, huge drizzle, a lot of rain, heavy downpours and uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to be caked up in mud yet again tonight. Anyway, what better way to spend your Sunday if you're indoors but to join us here on Twitch or indeed on YouTube or any other streaming platforms uh, and uh, you know, really align yourself with our communities in order to talk about everything you've been doing, about your activities online, your gaming and all the novelties really which indeed popped up during the last couple of weeks two very very big games massive big heavyweights had come up and as we know these are Resident Evil Village really very popular everybody is doing it and playing it at the moment on all platforms and I think they said that so far the village has been the most successful Resident Evil release on PlayStation sold about 3 million copies within the first couple of days and that is a truly astonishing achievement people are still bound to some of the long time franchises and series for obvious reasons its quality its dedication its most importantly in present and age are gaming based communities so for instance you have a very large community of gamers who were playing resident evil from the beginning uh, literally uh, since the day when it got released on PlayStation 1 so we are looking at I think about 26 years ago um, I was one of these guys in fact not on a day one but certainly uh, roughly around that period and uh, Resident Evil was the first game together with Silent Hill and I think if I'm not mistaken there was Medal of Honor I like obviously military simulation games and these were the three that I got on my first console so definitely a uh, good fun and uh, we played quite a bit of it at the time so obviously many years later you have lots of uh, younger generation participants coming in trying out the latest installment of the series and then perhaps going back in time and quite frankly just to remind you if you are a dedicated Resident Evil fan particularly of the recent um, titles you can also go to um, Xbox uh, Microsoft Store and purchase the original which has been remastered and you will get the version that was um, released by Nintendo a little while back and uh, you can uh, enjoy it in full. It is certainly um, provided in a format that is accessible uh, on the new gen or should we say next gen consoles works perfectly well and you will get a very 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 good picture of what the game was actually like. That is not the very original it's the remake I think we need to make that clarification and there are also some um, bundles and packs that include other games from the series offered them very very good prices so if you want to go back in time as you complete the village 
you can just uh, snap them up. Obviously, you can wait for discounts, and frequently we get really good offers uh, through the store. So I purchased a number of those. Still haven't purchased uh, the digital versions of uh, Resident Evil 4, 5, 6, and 7. And I think for the 7, I'm not bothered as I have it on both PS Now and X uh, Xbox Game Pass services. But for the other ones, uh, I have them on uh, discs and presently I'm not accessing them. So, you know, in due course, you can probably get them for as little as 6 or £7. Pounds. £5, pounds, in fact, I think was uh, the lowest price I've seen on these three. So if you want to have a full collection, uh, wait for the price to drop and then obviously purchase them and you will have them forever. So, let me think, uh, the other big title, of course, was Mass Effect Legendary Edition, released uh, uh, on Friday, and uh, uh, there's been a lot of excitement and plenty of good news and reviews coming in from everywhere. We talked about it quite a bit during the week, so these are the highlights, you know, and if you're interested in all that's been said, you can go back in time and just hit that play button on our VOD, i.e. playback, all of our uh, podcasts are archived on YouTube, and you can also access them through Twitch. Make sure you listen to some of it and um, send us some of the comments and views, particularly if you are playing these games. I mean, I'm really interested to hear from anyone uh, who is doing either The Village or Returnal or uh, Legendary, Mass Effect Legendary that is. Tell us what you're experiencing so far. Hood Outlaws is another game that I really want to um, explore and uh, I've uh, uh, talked about it quite a bit here. It's been well advertised through Xbox services and if anybody's doing Hood, just ping us a message and tell us what your experience is so far. It looks like a wonderful multiplayer which does have very very um, well developed advanced graphics similar to uh, Vermintide and uh, you are basically um, looting, you are sneaking in order to do robberies and various other uh, uncanny activities I think in an area which is infested with all kinds of hostilities and um, a PvP a battle royale, you name it. Send us an, you know, send us messages and tell us really what your experience of that multiplayer is. It's not free of charge presently, but I think they will go down this route in due course. And I think there is there is another game. It's quite similar to it. It is Hunt Showdown. Uh, the game I streamed here and introduced as part of the Abbey Mill introducing, and I played it quite a bit. Highly recommend that game to everyone because similar to what we have in um, Gambit, uh, Destiny 2 or in uh, the Dark Zone of the Division 2, you basically are entering a huge, well, a very large area that is similar to Red Dead Redemption, it's in Louisiana. And you never know who you're going to meet, whether it's going to be another PvP opponent or basically just some of the uh, AI uh, characters who are also very, very unfriendly and uh, very, very deadly. You will have to be uh, saving ammunition, uh, collecting adequate weapons, and just like any other um, PvE stroke PvP game, uh, you really want to be doing it together with your team. So yet again, I want to remind everyone, Hunt had not received huge publicity, and I've not seen that many articles and um, trailers everywhere on various platforms, but I can most highly recommend it to everyone. They just had new additions, I think some seasonal content and DLCs, so definitely uh, worthwhile exploring. So let me think, oh, let's see who's here. We have Eddie Boy here and uh, um, Eddie Boy is asking about trials. Uh, hello, how are you doing? I'm actually uh, delivering the podcast so I uh, can just very briefly answer the question on trials. I've not played trials at all so far so obviously I can't provide you with any comments. I think they were reworking them and they were pulled for a little while so anybody else who's watching and who's interested in trials, trials is the pinnacle activity of Destiny and it's been introduced to the sequel to the Destiny Beyond Light uh, after originally it's been just accessible through uh, the um, original title so basically if anybody has indeed played Trials please ping a message here on Twitch and let our friend um, Eddie Boy know what the experience was I know that Sekapupu is frequently playing it so if you're interested just ping him a message Sekapupu is here uh, uh, a member of our Destiny community online I'm sure he'll be able to uh, provide you with some tips and tricks because he's, he's really a vet veteran of um, all the PvP activities in Destiny Right, so coming back to 
all that we are doing at the moment. Quite frankly, I played the Outer Worlds and Yakuza quite a bit. The Outer Worlds is a massive, massive game, quite similar to Destiny in concept, and also bringing in uh, the ideas and in-game mechanics of Fallout. So if you are uh, indeed on Xbox Game Pass, or you're uh, a subscriber to the Ultimate, you want to be uh, popping in and having a look, and you need to lie quite a bit of time. The game probably plays uh, for more than 140 hours if you want to be uh, doing all the side quests and uh, everything <coughs> which you unlock as you go along together with campaigns and other niceties recently they introduced also uh, two DLCs and you know it's just my kind of game I really love it uh, I love the story love the way I love the way it's delivered and I really um, always treasured the exploration of the open world which was full of interesting characters creatures uh, loot and plenty of uh, exciting dialogue and that's exactly what that game is offering so uh, the outer worlds I'm still engaging with and I've probably played for quite some time and Yakuza and I have no time for anything else because obviously every day we spend up to eight hours uh, playing Destiny, Warzone and obviously me talking here on my podcast so you know there is little time and there are lots of games but I want to draw your attention to another streaming service which is on PlayStation they introduced last month uh, two wonderful games that indeed uh, are uh, of interest to everyone and that's Marvel Avengers the game that did not perform too well on release I played it in its beta format and introduced it here and I thought the beta was incredible one of the best ever played everything worked perfectly and it was highly enjoyable but the game wasn't too well received I'm not sure you know what the reason for that was there were some technical problems with PvP and there were some issues with uh, I think uh, game crashes and saves I think the complaints were primarily about the content so I'm not sure I need to play it and uh, I will do so I will do it on PlayStation now uh, but you know at the moment I've just cut out any of the late night activities on my consoles because um, bright colors wake me up and then I can't sleep and you know then it affects my the r it affects my routine uh, which indeed is very very solid as you can see and uh, therefore I had to extract myself from that usually after 8 o'clock I don't do anything which is video gaming related uh, I got my dinner once I come back I watch films and as you know I write on films and uh, therefore that is my sort of everyday vice I need to watch at least one or two films before I go to bed and then obviously I hit the sack so I watched Woody Allen uh, retrospective uh, recently and prior to that Francis Ford Coppola and then there was Martin Scorsese and uh, there was Steven Soderbergh so you know I really kind of watch them in a season similar to what you have in uh, British Film Institute or any of your film archives and therefore I soak up all the uh, ideas all the perspectives and the main body of works related to certain directors actors producers screenwriters you know all genres as it goes and that really makes my evenings very very full and thoroughly enjoyable coming back to games what are you guys doing what games are you playing at the moment are you enjoying any of the recent releases I, I jumped actually there were two games <coughs> released on and there were two games released on uh, PS now recently um, that come the category of triple blockbuster one was Marvel Avengers the other one's Borderlands 3 both games are played on Xbox and uh, I love them I think Borderlands 3 for myself from what I experienced so far I'm not completely the game is uh, the best out of three and I loved everything in it you know from the dialogue to the activity extra content you name it so Borderlands 3 I need to be playing quite a bit and indeed uh, attempting to complete both games are not offered infinitely so you will have I think three months on one and about six months on the other roughly don't quote me this is it's it's a, it's a lengthier stretch so it's long enough for people to um, complete these games but make sure that for the blockbusters on the now services you always double check the date and it's very easy as you put on uh, the um, the slide the the menu of a particular game you will get that fully indicated so it doesn't say anything means the game's there forever or for a very very long period of time and if it does give you the date that means that's the cutoff date make sure you play it because um, if th there is enough interest and obviously they pull the service and quite frankly we'll talk about PlayStation uh, in a bit 
as they are well, originally they said they will not follow the model offered by Xbox and Microsoft but we've seen certainly in recent months or I should say even more so in recent weeks that they are really trying to um, provide similar sort of services so we are having uh, activities which are similar to Xbox ambassadors involvement on PlayStation out of the blue in fact and they want to be doing some community communal activities with some rewards and achievements and you know that sort of thing they're lagging behind and I think unless they really um, get a better more modern more useful more kind of after scratch team working on their systems campaigns and uh, plans they will definitely lose out to Microsoft as uh, the corporation is offering a staggering amount of uh, novelties and they include xCloud and um, you know instant access on platforms uh, new console uh, streaming services which are of the best possible quality new titles being released through the services similar to Netflix and the list just goes on and on and on so really very very hard to compete I think everyone's feeling the pinch um, really <coughs> inclusive of Epic and PlayStation all other platforms and we've seen sadly that uh, one of the most treasured magazines here in Britain and I think worldwide PlayStation magazine that's been around for more than 20 years is gone and uh, they've gone down the route of creating or converting it to a magazine called Play and you know Play magazine is basically cross-platform so there's no longer the um, idea that if you are belonging to one of the consoles you are going to be just hammering the games which are attached to it and the same thing happened to Xbox official magazine it's no longer around and I'm really sad because I really like these magazines I was reading them every single month for many years and uh, they did provide us with a lot of information and content beautiful designs graphics and you know anybody anybody who likes video games is a fan of graphic novels so you've gone through graphic novels and then you migrate to video games if you are a member of the older generation like myself otherwise if you're a member of the younger generation you're playing games like Gears and Star Wars and uh, let me think um, uh, these are the two that come to mind and then you can go to a local library and borrow you know graphic novels which are based on these video games so it actually works the other way around nevertheless thoroughly enjoyable and uh, I have uh, um, seen watched played read all of these and uh, they make it a very very comprehensive nice package for everyone to enjoy so definitely we are looking at the times where cross-platform is the king and uh, sadly we're still waiting for it to arrive to destiny and i have to say bungie honestly they they could have introduced that long while back but you know there's also the monetary side of things and we've seen this with pubg and apex they will give you um, instant uh, 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 cross-platform access they will not provide you with cross-platform save and that's ridiculous because what's the point i mean i have all platforms here and I can play the game on any of them at any time but just need to grind from the beginning and like for instance if you are buying battle passes and I mean I'm not but you know other people are you have to be buying every one of those on a separate platform just think about the revenue you know it will be obsolete in due course and uh, I say in no time similar to what we had with the pornographic industries they were waiting for too long keeping the prices too high and they just crashed so that's exactly what's going to happen you know in respect of uh, non cross platform access for these massive AAA blockbusters PvP games in particular they will not be popular people will not want to do them and people will not want to be investing and then we have a massive amount of uh, dissatisfaction coming in from every corner of the planet on Twitter and Reddit and therefore they can bury certain developers uh, don't forget if people start boycotting the release of the game the way it is today nobody will buy it you know I mean we've seen that with games that backfire technically and it's like a huge problem it's just uh, sadly if you want to manipulate uh, well by audiences you can also set up lots of negative reviews and create a very negative aura on the internet to be fair I was very surprised with uh, some of the negative responses we've had recently um, in relation to certain games and uh, our tribe this stands out as the prime example the um, game really was a serious contender to Destiny and there were so many terrible reviews about our tribe's demo and you know the game the full game before before its release and um, couldn't work out why I mean I played the demo which was wonderful and the game itself as offered either on the digital download or through a streaming platform uh, on Xbox is perfect 
works as it should and you know just a really good game uh, they tried to ruin it didn't work the game indeed took off in a very big fashion there's been a lot of hype people are still doing it and playing it's not really a massive game but uh, with a huge capacity for expansions and new content and grinds and most importantly for replayability they have uh, separate supers and uh, you know the uh, special subclasses where you can be using different things on a separate character and you cannot be altering as you really go through the game so it'll make it highly replayable and even more so uh, enjoyable and um, uh, tactical you know on, on the to the umpteenth degree if you're doing it with a squad and uh, it's one of those games similar to destiny you've got to be doing with your squad at all times um, it becomes a different game altogether right so these are some of the thoughts about this weekend i can see that as i kicked off with my activities live online today uh, the rain stopped there's bright sunshine outside uh, it's been uncanny isn't it like when I want to go out then it's raining and then when I'm doing my online work um, we get all the sunshine so a bit unfair coming back to our activities hopefully you've been enjoying our uh, Destiny and Warzone streams this week we've gone back to Destiny we had Destiny 1 and now Destiny 2 Season of a Splice I kicked off uh, on Tuesday and uh, I had subscribed to the season because it was offered on a very low price through um, Xbox Ultimate I had 25% off and it was a no-brainer. Just jumped in straight away. Also explained every to everyone that you do not you do not need to be buying the full pack of uh, three seasons. Uh, the offering uh, since we had Beyond Light, uh, the packs well actually access to every single season separately, and therefore you can purchase them in isolation. They cost you roughly between ten and fifteen dollars depending on what platform you're using, and if you have uh, as I said, some of these subscriptions you'll get some discount as well. So that was pretty good. No wonder that. Um, Bungie offering discounts through uh, um, Xbox because they partnered up yet again with the corporation and we've seen that the works and the partnership so far have been very successful. I'd like to see a lot more of it, of it. and uh, I'm enjoying the season. Certainly uh, uh, all the activities we've done so far were really enjoyable and they're also giving us some uh, new um, dimensions within uh, uh, the season. Uh, within uh, the the new season and uh, <coughs> we are getting six man activity which is basically going to be changing every single week so we'll have like a pinnacle activity for a six man team we have some story driven content we have uh, um, some cutscenes we have a lot of grinds we can be unlocking certain rewards sadly I assumed that the unlocking would also be allowing us to be claiming uh, items like jackets t-shirts and uh, rings and cups. That is not the case. Apparently we are unlocking our access to the store in order to be buying them. So I'm not really excited about that. I think it's ridiculous and quite frankly they need to be making uh, access to um, items like you know um, souvenirs, right? So that's pens and uh, charms and uh, pins and cups and you know these sorts of things, boxes which you will be claiming if you are completing certain tasks so that is what needs to be the focus and maybe in due course we'll get some of it and uh, also what is significant they reworked the inventory and uh, the way you're doing your shaders and that's really quite interesting it's giving us a much more dynamic access to it it's easier to see what you're wearing at what time and i think my, my personal feeling is um, season of the splice is representing <coughs> the new direction the one they talked about before beyond light was released and we are also looking at uh, all the other things to follow in September or November once we get the new chapter. So we are going down the route of um, an RPG driven content. A lot more activities are based on the story and I think they're working very hard to rework the concept which is previously just an open world massive big non-linear type of activity. Very hard to follow the story because you're having this massive big universe with lots of different enemies and I really couldn't personally find out who was doing what. Uh, and uh, with my Destiny 1 streams, we've gone several times through um, story missions, the campaign, in a linear fashion, basically. We play them chronologically. And still we couldn't work out who certain enemies were. So as you could see, instead of having just Ghost 
telling you all the stories and you soaking up all the facts and figures in a very dense format which was indeed very confusing uh, we are getting now uh, the story uh, delivered through many different NPCs and even some of them can talk to you you can be approaching them and asking certain questions and that is giving us I guess the format quite similar to what we had in Mass Effect albeit not in the same uh, uh, quantity you know with questions and answers and dialogue and uh, your line of action which will um, determine what type of outcome you are going to be getting so destiny is not that kind of game and i think considering the volume at present they will not be able to do it maybe due course destiny is a game that combines uh, fierce uh, pvp and pve activity it's primarily an fps uh, shooter where you are also getting involved with story driven content and multiplayer activities and that's really critical it's one of the best multiplayer activities uh, that any uh, open world game would have been offering and uh, we've had many many gamers migrating from Halo originally and then also from some of the other titles and becoming very dedicated Destiny veterans and fans so Season of Splicer is up and running it's been around for about four or five days I'm loving it I think it's great and uh, I've been also unlocking lots of rewards uh, it seems to me that they really listen to the community because last year has been very difficult for everyone worldwide, inclusive of Bungie. They work from home and the content delivered in three seasons of last year has been very slim and very repetitive and not really happy or you know, particularly excited by it. And uh, several of our community members departed from everyday uh, gameplay because of that reason. They thought, well, you know, we're just grinding and doing the same thing again and again, not getting really rewards which are of any significance and uh, therefore we're not going to do it and I did exactly the same I've gone in for every season I did play quite a bit and uh, gone in maybe for one round of Iron Banner one round of um, Guardian games and a few other bits and pieces but you know generally it felt like an empty run having a year in which Bungie team were really working on the new chapter and all of these uh, new directions but I think with the current season, Season of Splice, we are getting some flavours of it. I'm particularly pleased about the inclusion of six-man team. Destiny was generally giving us a three-man team to tackle strikes and uh, PvE-based missions and with a six-man team and so-called pinnacle uh, story-driven activities every single week we are going to be really reaching some new heights and I would like to encourage everybody to connect. The problem with it is they really should have done uh, the introduction of cross-platform already. Six-man team is going to be hard to get every single day unless you have cross-platform access. It's just a fact and I was getting many messages previously uh, from people who on Xbox when I was streaming it on uh, PlayStation vice versa asking do I know anybody else who wants to join them. The benefit of cross-platform is a bit like having free travel worldwide. You know, you can go anywhere around the world. Think about it. Iron Curtain, communism and capitalism at loggerheads. People couldn't really travel to these other countries. There were restrictions, there were penalties, there was all sorts. And today, people travel everywhere. Right? Obviously, the pandemic caused a serious problems with um, uh, access uh, to airliners and you know the usual means of travel but all will come back in due course what I'm trying to say is uh, cross-platform access in uh, gaming is similar to that it means that people can come in from anywhere at any time so just multiplying the number of participants uh, and uh, it's going to be no problem finding some people to join you literally at any hour and uh, also if you have uh, the service which are accessing the entire world because we've seen with some of the games they're giving us regional service so obviously for let's say if you are accessing European service it may be more difficult to get some people uh, earlier in the day it's inc incidentally it's quite easy to get people in the middle of the night because lots of gamers and streamers are doing it until about 3 or 4 in the morning um, but if you were to be doing it like myself during your working day um, so um, start at 10 or 11 o'clock it would be more difficult to have some participants if it's global like for instance with Warzone uh, or with Apex Apex in particular, in fact, Warzone is regional, I, I stand corrected there. Uh, with Apex, you will get people coming in from everywhere, right? PUBG is the same. You get people from every, you know, every country. And therefore, there's going to be uh, no shortage of players at any time. And that is appreciated. That is what we want to have. And that is what we really need here in Destiny. Because I think if we introduced uh, cross-platform access uh, already, then six-man activity would take off 
immediately in, in you know in major fashion and we need to see what the feedback uh, for it is so far well it's just one activity per week we need to see what the activity for this week is because uh, the weekly reset for destiny is on Tuesday and you really want to be completing it beforehand so really if you're not doing it on Wednesday or Thursday make sure your weekend is full of those activities because I think some of them will be quite difficult and they will take a bit of time uh, in order to complete and make sure you have your mates uh, joining you in full. Right, so let's have a look at all the news, what's been happening in uh, our gaming community and what's been happening worldwide. Well, as I said, we had several big releases and today we'll be looking at all the news that come in uh, during the week because quite frankly I spent every podcast dedicated to uh, the biggies, you know, Resident Evil Village, Returnal, uh, 20 years of Xbox, which we, we are celebrating at the moment, and we were looking also at uh, Mass Effect Legendary and most importantly Season of the Splicer, giving you the rundown on every single detail of the season this week. So if you head to my Twitter, go back to uh, in time to my podcast from uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, you will have an abundance of information in there on everything that we are indeed offered. And also there's some feedback uh, on what's been experienced so far. So we are going to be looking at uh, what's been uh, given to us this week on the wires. And uh, we have, first of all, the celebration of 20 years of Xbox, dedicated one of my podcasts to it. Uh, most importantly, if you are an Xbox fan or veteran, indeed if you're playing on uh, um, Microsoft platform, uh, Microsoft console, please make sure that you are celebrating these 20 years on Twitter and use hashtag Xbox 20. You can tell us all about your gaming experiences, what your uh, activity on various consoles of the years really was, what your favorite games were. Uh, just share some of uh, uh, those uh, parts of your lengthy journey. And if you are using hashtag Xbox 20, then you're also entering the global arena of competitors and uh, you will be um, perhaps given some rewards because there will be many rewards given to um, Xbox uh, um, community participants uh, if they are using at um, hashtag Xbox 20 for every single message and Microsoft will be looking at quite a selection of um, screenshots in um, you know uh, uh, various types of descriptions of gaming experiences an overall history of certain types of titles that were evolving over the years, most notably the exclusives of Xbox like Halo and Gears and Fable. Uh, you know, so these are the ones that uh, will be featuring perhaps more prominently compared to some of the other ones. So we need to see what uh, has been said through um, uh, this week on Xbox, and um, we've seen obviously first of all that. Um, the corporation is offering quite a multitude of different activities throughout the period of six months starting out on uh, I think 13th of uh, May and ending in November and basically the entire celebration is going to be looking at the history of their releases and you know, the journey as it's been so far as I said we have FanFest which is asking people to do lots of different things and make sure you stay fully abreast by subscribing to it you'll get uh, regular newsletters and then you'll be able to see what types of gifts you can claim and frequently there will be um, screenshots and um, wallpapers and maybe some other niceties maybe sometimes even free games or free access to games or certain coins we need to see the first lot that they offered was various bits of merchandise and <coughs> I'm not particularly keen on this because quite frankly if you're looking at the fan festival you want not just merchandise to be sold to you first of all you want to be looking at the activity that will bring people together in order to talk so that is done through Xbox Ambassadors Club so if you're one of those join us and make sure you share your thoughts and views uh, through various Xbox Ambassador forums this week we are having two games offered on uh, Xbox for free these are NBA 2K21 and TT Isle of Man Ride on the Edge. Two sports games. One is um, a motorcycle based game and the other is indeed I think based on basketball. I'm not really um, into uh, the sports games so very rarely do I um, talk about them because I feel sports is something you need to do outside. You know if you play tennis, golf, football or anything else. I just not grown 
uh, with that. But on the other hand, I have seen some um, elements in these games which are almost like an RPG style titles and uh, I'm definitely needing to look at that in depth but I'm certainly not the person to describe uh, anything which is um, sports games related. Um, so we have uh, um, May Xbox update includes quick resume improvements, pass through audio and more. So I'm quite curious to see um, what this is because um, quick resume is the new button, the new facility that we have on Xbox Series X and S. It's been very very popular so far and many people have been complimenting Microsoft for this invention because quite frankly if you are doing games like Yakuza The Outer World like myself when you click that button you're jumping in immediately without any waiting periods there's no loading or anything you're just immediately in there and you're cracking on with the game where you left off so that's really tremendous and th there are some improvements to this so the quick resume is getting even better with improved reliability faster load times and the new group that organizes your quick resume games in one place but that's particularly the case in the games that have lengthy reload periods and uh, you know definitely very applicable very useful it'll uh, speed up the activity and will be basically cutting out the chaff no time waste basically that that's 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 the most important part of it pass through audio gives your media applications the best possible listening experience with your external sound system what we've seen in certainly recent months that Xbox were introducing not just their own proprietary accessories like headsets but also the other ones offered by third-party partners and some of these are really incredible very very expensive headsets I've got to say but I really think headsets are absolutely essential if you are to be doing these massive um, immersive open world games like Destiny and Fallout you really want to have the best possible headset in order to hear all the sounds if you're a battle royale gamer if you play uh, Warzone and PUBG you absolutely want to have these because they really define where the enemy is if you're listening uh, make sure you're not playing them too loud because explosions and firefights could really be very deafening and uh, make sure you adjust uh, the game sound you know on the menu but the high quality uh, sound that the headsets are going to be delivering is fundamental absolutely fundamental for your overall gaming experience so I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of some of these I've seen and I use um, Turtle Beach they're perhaps not on the level of Bang Olufsen you know but still providing me with absolutely phenomenal sound quality and I've been a Turtle Beach dedicated fan for more than 15 years and I can just compliment the company for inventing fantastically useful practical high quality headsets and I can recommend the um, accessories that are made by this corporation to everyone. Starting this month you can approve multiplayer games for your kids by specific title directly from the console or uh, by conducting some um, guidance through your uh, app which is on your Android or iPhone. They worked hard on certain types of restrictions like uh, uh, family lock and uh, you know the ways to which parents can control what children do because there's been a lot of concern in the US about parents not paying attention and children playing uh, adult games and doing everything possible to encourage that degree of control so much easier for a parent if uh, <coughs> giving the console to the child to be monitoring the overall activity but you know on the other hand children can be very um, geeky and they'll find the ways to which to bypass these controls still I think it's a great invention and a terrific novelty for everyone to use so what are the new quick resume improvements uh, quick resume is a feature powered by the technical capabilities of the innovative Xbox velocity architecture in Xbox series X and S so if you are on Xbox one X or S you're not getting it it's just on the next-gen consoles and it lets you seems to switch between multiple games and resume gameplay instantly right from where you last left off that is extremely useful I mean I have to say for the multiplayers and particularly for open world games uh, when I have for instance Fallout and I have um, Skyrim and uh, uh, Destiny and then I have uh, um, uh, the Outer Worlds and Yakuza these are massive games and being able just to click from one to another in order to jump in is going to be of tremendous benefit 
and uh, you know definitely is uh, providing us with, with everything already and uh, uh, quick resume is getting even better with improved reliability and faster load times I'm surprised because I thought the load times as I've seen them or experienced them so far have been very very good we also made it easier to identify and access games that support and are saved quick resume you'll be able to see it if your current game supports quick re resume with a new tag and uh, uh, so that's really quite good it's not for every game but by the looks of it and uh, um, gamers on Xbox Series X and S can also take advantage of the new group that lists all the games currently saved in quick resume it's very very good you can use the group to see which games are readily launched from quick resume and launch them from there so like like other groups you can add uh, um, you can add it to your home uh, for quick access or customize your experience by removing a game uh, from the quick resume uh, state so that's very good and I've got to say that uh, the new menu that we have on Xbox is really astonishingly easy to use and it's very practical much improved and they're working constantly on that being fully integrated also with apps so uh, you know everything is about cross-platform I think Phil Spencer did say uh, it is all about connectivity, communication, and cross-platform access. So that's the future. And we've seen Subnautica. Well, there's been quite a lot of talk on Subnautica in the latest Xbox podcast. That's been released on Friday. If you're interested, if you play Subnautica 1, this is the sequel. And one of the game developers uh, is indeed interviewed for the podcast. So he talked about a bit about all they completed and as the wider felt that the sequel was superior to the original. So let me see what they said here. Um, and he is David Kalina, project lead of um, Below Zero. He worked on Subnautica. As the person responsible for the creative direction of Subnautica Below Zero, I spent a lot of time trying to understand what makes the highly esteemed original Subnautica tick. Below Zero has been built on top of a game that uh, many know and indeed love, but we are not looking to play the ex same exact song each time. Below Zero must reflect on I beg your pardon. Uh, Below Zero must reflect the values that made Subnautica great, uh, while also giving players something new and different. Subnautica is many things to many people. If I have to describe it in a sentence, I might say it, it's an open world, underwater, sci-fi, base building, survival adventure game with a hint of primal terror. So uh, <laughs> and that's a very, very lengthy, complicated, but rather accurate description of uh, the title. So what's different about Subnautica? For me, it's the core. Uh, Subnautica is a game about exploration and discovery. Our philosophy is that the experience is at its best when you trust players to discover these vast alien worlds and its many secrets and surprises on their own. It's our belief that the thrill, uh, that the thrill of discovery encountering a strange life form at the bottom of the ocean, awakening an ancient alien intelligence, wandering into a brilliant and unexpected underwater cavern is so much richer when players are uh, driving the experience forward themselves. So this filters into how we approach to design. Our philosophy is to always try to suggest direction rather than offer it explicitly. One of the first things players notice in that Subnautica doesn't have missions or objectives. We do not tell you that you are in 47 or 110 percent through the game. Uh, you can find the map of the world, uh, but we do not show you your position or even your orientation until you build a compass. And uh, what is good if a 2D map underwater anyway? It's up to you to find your way through the world, finding new ways to survive and explore as you get deeper and further into this planet completely alone. Also, you might think in Below Zero. In Below Zero, you play xenobiologist Robin Ayu, who arrives on uh, 4546B at great personal risk and trying to find answers about a sister who died under mysterious circumstances during a previous mission in Sector Zero. So naturally, this quest for understanding doesn't go quite away and encounters other life forms which will take you in many unexpected directions. So the developer has taken great pains to design uh, a narrative for players to discover. It's like an open world discovery, but it's taking place underwater. Uh, we give some early hints to get the ball rolling, but then you're left to your own devices, searching for clues scattered throughout the, this vast world's deep underwater biomes and the far reaches of this icy tundra. So that's really terrific, and I'm definitely interested. I did not play Subnautica 1, 
must confess, and it is accessible on Xbox Game Pass. Is this game also accessible through Game Pass on day one? That's the question. I don't think there is. Yeah. So we need to buy it. We've heard a lot about Mass Effect Legendary Edition, so I'm not going to be elaborating on it today. But you can relive the cinematic sci-fi saga today with the Mass Effect Legendary Edition for Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S and experience the legend of Commander Shepard and the crew of SS Normandy. Actually, I will tell you a bit more um, as I have some news on my um, Discord. And uh, I had some um, messages in response to this. Let me see. We have, uh, uh, first of all, if you're interested in doing every single mission and you want to have like a proper map and a guide uh, on how to do this, you can head to um, uh, Games Radar and they're offering a very detailed walkthrough. And uh, Mass Effect Trilogy is like the Akuza, it's a massive big game and you can do lots of different things at different times uh, as you really um, engage with um, Commander Shepard and his crew. So if you want to know how to do it, if you want to um, uh, be a completionist, unlock every single side quest. I think this is the way forward. So they say um, Mass Effect Legendary Edition uh, walkthrough here on. Um, just bear, uh, bear with me. It's it's not allowing me to read because um, we have two websites. Games Radar. One is uh, based in the US, the other in the UK, and for some reason the UK site is not working. And they said the Mass Effect Legendary Edition guide will help provide a walkthrough for all three games as you revisit the complete trilogy in its fully remastered glory. As well as the main games, practically every piece of single player DLC has also been included, meaning you're really getting the complete package as you head off on your space adventures with Commander Shepard. Naturally, you'll want to get the most out of this experience. So, um, Games Radar do have a whole suite of uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition walkthroughs covering romances, weapons, how to get best possible endings for all three games in the set if you're ready you can just crack on. Well, I need to say that, uh, well, so you have um, Mass Effect Romance Guide, Mass Effect Keeper's Guide, Endings Guide, what else? Oh, I see, that's for uh, three separate games. Okay, that's quite good. So nice and simple. And um, you have also another, which is uh, a, a detailed walkthrough. So what's the other bit of news which we do have here? Let me see. Uh, the controversial photo of Tali's face has been changed in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So I'm curious to see. I quite like Tali. And uh, we hear that Bioware chose the Paragon option. There are lots of small changes in the remastered Mass Effect Legendary Edition. For instance, a minor NPC from a side mission in the first game named Elenos Halliot, who was originally given a human model by mistake, now appears as a Torian, as he was supposed to be. Another change that's more likely to set the internet on fire is that the photograph of Tali, the romanceable Quarian engineer who was one of the trilogy's most popular characters, now has a different face. So in the first two games, only vague details of Tali's face were visible due to the helmet she wore to keep her safe from disease. And uh, um, even after romancing Tali, you didn't get a clear look at her face until a scene when Shepard picks up a framed photographs and reminisces. In the original version of Mass Effect 3, that photograph was a photoshopped stock image. Fans who were hoping to see something a little more alien, a little less bought from Getty images, but boycott with their disappointment. So, now in the Legend Edition, you still do not see Tali's face anywhere else, at least the photographs has been changed to something that leaves a little more of her appearance to your imagination. Looks very slightly more alien. I mean, I'm not about to replay the series to romance Tali instead of Lara with this, but it is quite something. So they actually did tweak that somewhat, and uh, you are able to get the reflection, at least some ideas, what she actually looks like. Neverwinter Sharanda Episode 2, the Soul Keeper is now live. The magic of Anis Hag may have been weakened, but the renewed battle with the Bywold continues with Neverwinter's Sharanda Episode 2, the Soul Keeper. I'll just very quickly see. Uh, I played Neverwinter quite extensively on PC, and uh, I played both Neverwinter 1, 2, and online, and most highly recommend it to everyone. Um, you know, the fans of Elder Scrolls and uh, certainly Dragon Age will love the game, and it is similar to these 
in the texture you have a similar sort of narrative a massive big open world loads of characters plenty of dialogue and wonderful adventures everywhere so they said that they are following the defeat of granny neck snapper in episode one and therefore the elves are focused on reinforcing their position in the ruins of Malabog and seeking answers to the disturbing accounts coming from the Mended Grove and that was previously in um, known as uh, <coughs> Blighted Grove. In episode 2, adventurers um, will once again assist the elves in uncovering information regarding the strange spectres seen wandering among the trees of the grove. So we have the um, bodies of these long departed Eladrin disrupting the rest of the visitors and Ilani Bruin like. Since the installment of the Sharanda storyline, players are introduced to Matilda Soul Stealer, the Night Hag, when she boldly reveals herself during an attack. Retreating into the um, ethereal plane, uh, she uh, um, will ultimately face daring adventures in her own uh, lair. It is within these twisted and dark corridors that players will seek to once again neutralize the darkness gripping the Mended Grove and stop future threats to the rebuilding of Sharanda. So it looks like there's lots of different content and that is the episode 2 on Neverwinter Online. I want to just clarify this is not to do with the original PC games. It's Neverwinter Online. Ah, uh, what else do we have? Lots of news coming in. Psychonauts available now with Xbox Game Pass. Well, that's great news. I want to do that. I want to have a look at it. In fact, they talked a bit about um, Psychonauts in the context of how mental illness or mental disturbance had been represented in video gaming. Uh, if you're interested, you can just head to Xbox Podcast for this week. And we have a specialist uh, who also works for Xbox, who specifically deals with disability and illness issues. And she talked about a lot about two games. Uh, that is um, uh, he uh, Hellblade Send of Sacrifice and uh, Psychonauts and the way they were representing people who are having some uh, mental health issues and a very very interesting certainly uh, interview and I've listened to it but I want to look deeper into it being a um, senior mental health professional myself and uh, I want to see how for instance uh, Microsoft are uh, working on some of these issues and how they're wanting to kind of bring in people into the communities who indeed have gone through certain experiences so definitely uh, my niche and definitely something I want to look into even deeper but for everyone interested in Psychonauts uh, the sequel is now uh, available now big pardon the original Psychonauts would be uh, 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 um, accessible let me see hang on I got it wrong it's not the sequel it's Psychonauts and Psychonauts will be coming soon to Xbox Game Pass and today we're excited to share that indeed uh, the game had arrived and that would have been yesterday so that's cool and uh, this is a psychic comedy adventure from the mind of Tim Schafer and brought to light by the strange game wizards of Double Fine Productions the game follows the story of a young psychic acrobat named Rasputin where you explore the fantastic realm of inner mind and uh, therefore you can join the Psychonauts it was released in 2005 and it resonated with fans of all ages for nearly two decades thanks to its mixture of com comedic storytelling and inventive level design. So this is really a wonderful game and I'm definitely going to be downloading it today and I'll be having a look, curious to see whether they've tweaked it for the next-gen consoles, whether we get better quality graphics, as has been the case with the vast majority of uh, titles on offer through the Game Pass. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Boomerang Fu Grilling Spree update is out at the moment. So that's very good. Uh, we are hearing from Paul Kopetko, founder of Cranky Watermelon, the developer of the game. We are getting the free grilling spree update for Boomerang Fu. The update includes two spicy new characters and six new arenas. And we can all get ready to roast and toast our friends in style with dozens of new costumes to unlock. So sounds very good, very exciting, very entertaining. And indeed, uh, I'd say energetic as always. Cosmic Top Secret available now for pre-order. Uh, making Cosmic Top Secret has been an incre incredible journey, says the developer. And she's the game director, Trina Lair. And she says that uh, we turn her investigation on her parents' work in the intelligence into a unique video game. So that is basically the works that the game director indeed completed. 
packaging tons of real stories and assets into unique visual and gaming experience. The title won multiple awards and inspired the creation of a life-size event at the Cold War Museum of Denmark. So Cosmic Top Secret is now available for pre-order on Xbox Store. So it's not on Xbox Game Pass, remember that. And uh, I'm curious to see what this is like. And let me see. Um, very quickly, we'll have a look. Making Top Secret has been an amazing journey that all started with a pinch of curiosity. So the game director tells us. My dad was part of the Danish intelligence during the Cold War. And one day he accidentally told me that he worked on Dask, the first computer in Denmark. I got seriously intrigued. What did he calculate on that machine? But he refused to tell me because of his lifetime confidentiality pledge. Rather dramatically, he said, I could enter, um, I could either know all or nothing, and I decided it is going to be all. I wanted to do this investigation into a game, and I did not know at first what kind of game, but I just knew it had to include my dad saying, No, I can't answer you. I started playing out with ideas, drawing characters and items, following my dad around and recording them. The game started to take shape and people joined the production. I called the intelligence and asked to get access to my parents' files. They were surprised but agreed to discuss it with the organization. My parents were invited for a briefing about what they could talk about and uh, what they couldn't really um, convey to anyone. Then it became quite awkward. They were asking, well, Trina, go ahead and ask us, what do you really want to know? And I was like, I do not know what it is and I do not know and I want to know. So uh, there were a couple of things which turned out to be very important in Cosmic Top Secret. How do secrets influence our lives? Number one, how can we know more if we do not know what is that we don't know? Number two, and do we need to know everything about each other? Well, <laughs> that's number three. <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, these are the questions I hope the players will ask themselves whilst playing the game. Well, thank you, Trina. That's very interesting and certainly excitingly curious it makes me definitely um, um, very interested in your game and if there is enough time I'll have a look and I'll pop in and play it so Chernobylite look at that that's quite funny uh, Chernobylite um, preserving the zone so I think for anyone who is doing stalker or playing warzone this game will be of interest we have Adam McGowan uh, senior marketing manager telling us a bit about it this is a, a, an upcoming sci-fi survival horror RPG, so that's similar to Stalker, set in the hyper-realistic 3D scanned wasteland of Chernobyl's exclusion zone, originating from a deeply personal experience for Polish developers, Farm 51. You can see Polish developers are thriving. I mean, we've seen now quite quite a number. Uh, project, um, CD Projekt Red, uh, 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 was it Bloomer, and then um, People can fly, all of them producing absolutely terrific games. And um, Farm 21 is excelling now with Chernobylite. So I'd say that video gaming um, production and development have taken off in a very, very big fashion in Poland during the last decades. And we can be just very excited. There'll be, there'll be so many new games coming in from these guys. And I've got to tell you, I listened to the interviews. They're so entertaining and so dedicated. And they resemble some of the guys who worked on the early um games for Bethesda and for Bungie so really absolutely terrific and uh, um in the spring of 1986 during a routine safety test designed to simulate an electrical power outage newly installed operators upon test completion triggered a reactor shutdown that actually did lead to two explosions which ruptured the reactor core and destroyed the reactor building this resulted in open air reactor core fire that released considerable amounts of radioactive contamination throughout Russia and Western Europe. That's incorrect. It's throughout Soviet Union. It's not Russia. So because the explosion was in Ukraine. So I'm not sure who was writing this, but uh, obviously not up to scratch with history. Um, the panic that followed from the resulting radioactive cloud spreading over Europe, the unpalatable Lugol's liquids that had to be drunk to counter the effects of the radiation poisoning, as well as an order to stay at home indoors that was the reality for many millions of people, including the members of Chernobylite's development team. So these events triggered a deep fascination and interest in Chernobyl with Farm 51, the developer. The interest was later developed into a project that aimed to transfer the Chernobyl power plant and surrounding city of Pripyat. So there is um, uh, the sequel to the Stalker that is called 
is it called the Enigma of Pripyat? It's Pripyat, obviously, is uh, in the title. A virtual documentary of the events that shook the world and uh, proceeds from this virtual experience were donated to the victims who still require care from the decades old disaster, taking many years to um, 3D scan one of the most dangerous places on Earth and faithfully recreate the zone. Farm 51 conceived the idea of developing a story driven game that could replicate the responsibility for oneself and others that Rose must have experienced in such a terrifying, absolutely dreadful situation. The game that will allow others to see and feel the atmosphere of this deserted, once bustling town with their own eyes, a feeling of sadness and emptiness, an intensified feeling of anxiety that Farm 51 felt themselves. Well, funny enough, we just had our Verdansk nuked in Warzone, and I think this game may well be a, um, you know, a perfect brother to our beloved Battle Royale. Preserving Chernobyl from natural destruction became one of the pillars of the game to um, memorialize a place that is deteriorating and disappearing from year to year. The abandoned buildings in the city of Pripyat, buildings and objects exposed to the weather that will not stand for um, the test of time. There are already places in Chernobyl that have collapsed or burned down in recent years and cannot only be seen thanks to the great effort to preserve the site in its digital form. Well, that's great. If you're interested, there's a lengthy article on the game on Xbox Wire, so you can obviously access it. And let me just see if there's anything else. We've come to the end of our time for um, uh, the uh, um, daily podcast. Uh, we'll polish it off with... Let me just very quickly see. We'll polish it off with some news on Roy Company. And uh, Roy Company we both uh, introduced, played and promoted here. It is uh, also a very good Battle Royale game and uh, we um, are delighted to see that Season 2 is indeed starting this week and uh, we've heard that, uh, well, it already kicked off on the May the 12th, which so is three or four days ago. Featuring an all-new Battle Pass, uh, New Rogue and more, the season of Rogue Company is shaping up to be our biggest yet. Read on uh, for all the exciting details about the Season 2 update, so I'll tell you all about it and then we'll wrap it up. So we're hearing from Nicholas Bashaw, who is a Senior Community Specialist at Rogue Company. Uh, the, the game has always seemingly existed beyond the reach of the law until right now. All these changes with the introduction of Mac, an unrelenting Justicar agent who will stop at nothing to bring those he's charged with to justice. Uh, when happen, uh, when what happens when an elite vigilante force who considers itself above the law collides with a man who considers himself to be a very embodiment of the law? Find out in the Rogue Company Season 2. So we've got a new operator. Max's main tools for law enforcement are conviction and objection. And we are not talking about courtroom maneuvers. We are talking about his trusty guns, which can be used to lay down major suppressing fire on the battlefield. If the fight gets up close and personal, Mac is always prepared with his massive claymore. This powerful sword, a weapon which hails from Max Holm in the Scottish Isles, can do some serious damage in close quarters. A defender who excels at repelling attacking enemies, Mac also comes equipped with his light bomb device, which can temporarily blind anyone on the opposing team who is caught in the blast. So the season two also introduces an all new Rogue Company battle pass. Incarcerated by Mac, Ronin's new prisoner 625 outfit headlines in um, headlines this battle pass. She may be locked up for now, but nobody can keep um, Ronin under lock and key for too long. Uh, players advancing through this battle pass will also unlock Golden uh, Lancer, Urban Explorer Glitch and Wasteland Scavenger, uh, as well as dozens of other rewards. Every player will earn three rewards during Season 2, whether or not they've unlocked the full battle pass, meaning you can dive in today and start earning free rewards. Well, that's sounding very good. I've got to say that uh, the graphics of Rogue um, Company are absolutely top-notch. I enjoyed playing the game on um, uh, both Xbox and PlayStation. So if you have a chance, just download it. It's free of charge. And they will be, well, they're basically produce, um, introducing the same um, eco model that we've seen with Warzone and Apex. Although originally they were selling the game, and I think they just resorted to... Uh, the latter because it turns out to be more financially successful. A very good game, also the best played with your steady crew. Do not resort just to the randoms unless you're building a community. Make sure you have three or four people always with you fully on board.
So, my friends, these were the news. These were news about all the games, the interesting ones that would have uh, been coming to our shores this week. And I personally uh, feel very excited by the titles like Com Cosmic Top Secret Available, uh, Subnautica, and most importantly, we were looking at uh, um, uh, the uh, new season for uh, Rogue Company. So, all of these are for you to enjoy. Simply go to um, either Microsoft or PlayStation Store click on that buy button and therefore um, download and then play the game with your mates and your community members and that's exactly what we are going to be doing straight away here on the channel we come to the end of our podcast and we are now going to be migrating to the world of destiny and season of the splicer after that we'll have a session of warzone as usual so destiny and warzone are next stay with us and i shall see you all a bit later